Writing PRDs or product requirement document is one of the most essential skills to be a product manager. A product requirement document or a PRD is something that a tech team, a product team, sales and marketing team refer uh, to understand what a product or a feature does. If you make a mistake of writing a PRD incorrectly, it's very likely that tech won't pick your requirements in the first place. So how do you write a great PRD? Let's get started. Now before I jump into the video, uh, let's be very clear that PRD is not the same as BRD. A PRD uh, only contains requirements that we need to build for a product or a feature or a feature requirement versus BRD which contains uh, data with respect to building an entire new business line. So there is one more similar document called MRD which is market requirement document. What I typically do is I combine both PRD and MRD to write one single document that both tech and marketing or sales can refer uh, when they want to know more about a feature or a product. Let's try and let's try sit together and build an actual PRD together. If not the entire PRD with all the details, let's try to build a structure together that you can use um, to kind of build your own PRDs as a product manager in the near future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop typing because it looks like a lot, my keyboard is making a lot of noise. I don't have a great setup so you'll hear a lot from the keyboard. Instead, I want you to hear a lot from me. So I'm going to stop typing and I'm going to speak a, a lot more about what you're seeing on the screen right now. A PRD should have three broad things, right? It should have the what of the problem, meaning what we want to build. Second, why we need to build it. Now this can answer questions like, why is the problem important? Um, why haven't other people tried to solve for the problem, etc., etc. And finally, what we need to answer, how of the problem? Now you won't go out there and tell your tech team how to code this out, right? Your job is only to tell them how you can approach, uh, you know, building this solution. So if, if you want the user to go via current flow from A to B, you will tell your tech team that, that you need your user to go from A to B. So when they are building it, they take that into account. So these are three broad structures. Now let's get into detail of each of these. Now that we're getting into the depth of each of what, why and how, let's first start by understanding what. There are three broad things that you need to figure out and what, which is what is the problem. Second, what's being done to solve the problem today and what will tell us if the solution works, right? Now, I can segment it down further and this will be nuanced depending on what product you're working on. So don't use this um, as your final document. You can use this as a reference point and some of these will definitely stay regardless of what product uh, or feature you're working on, right? But there will, be, uh, there will be a scope to add more things depending on the product you're working. I segmented each of the three questions into further sub points, right? For example, what is the problem will have use case or problem definition. Um, then what's being done to solve this will have current solution and user flow. And then finally, uh, what works will have business metrics, performance metrics and adoption metrics. Let's start by what is the problem. Now, this is the most important thing uh, of a PRD, right? If you can't communicate what the problem is correctly, the team will never really take this seriously because they know that this problem itself is not important which is why we've not invested enough time to kind of uh, drill down on the problem itself so you need to be very very clear about this now this should have use case and problem definition of i'm taking two examples and this is not a great example to write the problem but i'm doing this to primarily help you how to structure a prd right i'm not gonna go in depth for each of the points so first, use case and problem definition. So there is problem A in green across all of these sections and then there is a problem B in blue. Let's take the first problem. It takes 20 hours to travel from location A to location B. This, uh, this is the problem that we need to solve. Typically what will happen is now you'll answer why we need to solve this. But let's stick to what for now and try and see if we can answer uh, what people are doing to solve this today. So people are taking a train from location A uh, to location B. The reason is that there is bad connectivity of roads on this network, which is why people are kind of uh, taking train to this location. 
and then current user flow is where the user goes to station A, takes a train, goes to station B. The problem is station A to station B takes 20 hours. Now, how do we, so if we decide to take this problem up, is there a way to track um, that we have made progress uh, with respect to solving for this problem? Yes, so if you are able to reduce the time by any number, right? Now, in this case, I've taken 10, 10 as example. And um, you can see if the adoption has taken place. Now, if the X number of people who were first going via that specific route switch to your product, that will be a success metric for your product. Um, let's also look at the other thing, other problem that we've taken, which is it takes 10 seconds to load web page A. The reason why I've taken this problem is because I also want to tell you uh, about the PRD that you would communicate to your tech team in case you are improving an existing feature. Now it takes 10 seconds to open a web page. So the current solution is, um, we don't have a current solution. We are just seeing a lot of drop-offs and current user flow is that user is visiting pricing page and then goes to web page A and then drops off because of high tat. Now there are a couple of things that you can think of from this perspective, right? So the if the pricing page is from some other vendor, it means that the vendor's uh, time taken is high. So you may need to figure out a solution there. Again, that's something that we can discuss in how, but um, how do we track if the um, solution had worked is because if the number of paid users increase or and the number of drop-offs decrease on this specific page, you know the solution would work. So um, this is the what of the statement. Now let's jump to the um, why of the PRD. So now that we understand the what of the problem, let's quickly understand the why of the problem as well. Um, so why you need to typically, uh, in why you need to typically answer two questions. Why is the problem important to solve and why hasn't someone else solved it? But bear in mind that you do need to ask a lot of whys before you build this solution. Um, and this typically happens when you are speaking to customers uh, to understand the type of product you need to build. Right, um, which is where you'll ask a lot of whys, and that's something that you need to typically document in a PRD as well. So, if your product requires you to do as much as much research, ensure uh, that you are showing your research in the PRD as well. Now, in this case, because this is just a sample uh, PRD, what I'll do is I'll give you a structured uh, document of PRD by the end of this video. But for now, uh, let's try to understand the why. Uh, two why questions that we need to answer. So impact of the product, right? Now, the f let's take the same examples from earlier, uh, the train example and the web page example. So the reason why we should build this is because there are 500 people traveling daily, paying 100. So this means 50,000 daily, meaning 50 lakh per month. And we have the infrastructure to do it. Um, there is a lack of competition and pressing pains means this is a a definite adoption opportunity. Meaning if we build this, we'll definitely have product adoption. Now, uh, to answer for the second problem itself, we are losing out on customers daily. Let's assume that every customer is paying uh, 100. Our average revenue per user is 100. Uh, and there are 100 customers, meaning we are losing out on 10,000 worth of revenue daily. So this is in cases where you are building upon an existing feature. So this is a pressing thing that you should definitely build. Now, uh, the other thing that you can also look at answering, and this is for your own curiosity, is why hasn't someone else solved it? Now, th there could be multiple reasons, right? The problem is very hard to solve, or it's a new problem, um, or it's not worth solving. So in this case, uh, the first one, First problem is too complex to build because it goes via forest and immediate road in price not possible. So if you, your company or your product is not great at building road infra, you might not want to look at this problem at all. In which case you can think of other ways to solve this problem, maybe introduce a, a small air, airway right between two location A and B. So that's something that you can look at. The other, um, this is not relevant to this question because essentially we'll have to do this, right? Because this is our existing feature and we need to improve it. So like I said, not everything will be relevant for each one of our products, right? All right, let's move on to the final how of a PRD. 
All right, moving on to the final section of a PRD before I give you a final template, how to do this, right? Now this is more execution focused and looks to answer um, one broad question is how do you build this? Now this has three sub questions uh, which are a UI UX design or the API design or proposed user flow and finally the amount of or the number of features to build or product to build. Now let's take examples of the problem we had taken earlier. So the first one was the train problem. So in this case, the design would be of the, um, you know, the journey of the road and the instrument that's going to take the user from location A to location B. Now the design will not only contain the look and feel, but also the user experience of the journey itself. So when you're thinking of the design of the train, also think of how the users will sit. Um, how they might enter the train, how they might exit the train, and uh, how long it would take. Uh, so think of it from the perspective of the journey itself. If they want to spend 10 hours in a train, what are the things that you would ensure that the users have in order for them to have good experience? The other thing this is for the second problem about the web page, it might not be relevant because the UI is not changing. Or maybe if the UI is changing from vendor A to vendor B, so that's something that you'd be putting here. Second proposed user flow uh, is when you show the entire journey of the user. So if this was the train train problem, I would show that the user is going currently going from A to B. So what I would instead do is user goes to airport A, uh, buys a ticket, then uh, user boards the plane and then reaches destination B and then goes wherever they want to go next. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about now uh, is the building the number of features or product in order to solve for this. Uh, now this basically has the list of product, uh, products or features that you would require to solve this problem. So how do we do this is by building X number of features with obviously the priority of when you want to build this. So uh, in this specific case, you need to build an airport A and airport B build a bunch of domestic flights and take government approvals. Now, given all of these are independent, you can start all of these now. So you don't need to have a priority dependency on either of these. You'd want to prioritize A, B, C, D, E. But if the same team is doing all of this right, you still need to define priority. So if the same team is building airport and domestic flights and taking government approvals, you need to prioritize which one is necessary first. So in this case, start by taking government approval. So if you're not getting an approval, you'd, you'd want to sunset the idea before uh, you start building airports A and B. So that's something that you can do to prioritize. And for feature or, or the problem B, you need to disconnect the vendor A, disconnect vendor A, and then connect vendor B instead. So that's the goal you'd want to achieve. Now these are all the, uh, th these are again the high level and kind of give you understanding of why we build PRDs in the first place. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the structure of a PRD uh, that you can refer when you're kind of writing a PRD of your own. So um, what I'm naming the header of the doc is building Taze flight from A to B. Now you always have to ensure that you have a name for the feature. Not only does it kind of gives a uh, sort of a motivation to people who are working on this, but it also gives them a medium to communicate with each other, right? Uh, so yeah, you got to keep that in mind. And then um, this is again a combination of why, what and how done together in a PRD. The very first thing that we are looking at is the problem definition where the use case is it takes 20 hours to travel from location A to B. Now, why should we solve this problem? Again, I mentioned that this is a great revenue opportunity and there is a lack of competition and this is also a pain. Current solution is something that we discussed. You can also build a flow like this. Now, this is a sample flow that I wanted to kind of uh, put so that you have some reference point. Finally, the issue with the current approach and then you propose solution. Now, the solution is huge you would ideally want to divide it in phases. Now in this case, phase one is to get government approvals. Once you get uh, government approvals, you can move on to subsequent phases. Now the objectives here are the BRD of the project, which is the business requirement that you would require. In cases uh, where this is a product, you would require a tech product, you would require a list of features here and the priority that you'd want to build them on. Second, uh, phase two, if the approval is granted, you need to start building airports, airport A and B, and then um, 
work on either buying flights or building flights in the second phase itself and then in third phase you can start testing with no passengers and in final phase you can start testing with passengers you can also give out a sample flow for uh, your teams to refer how the users will travel from location a to b now the sample flow should come by actually talking to the customers themselves so that's something that you might need to keep in mind and then finally metrics on how you would want to measure the success of this so there are business metrics that would talk about daily revenues revenue growth week on week there is adoption metrics which means the percentage of passengers traveling from traveling to location b using our flights and third finally performance metrics which is time taken round trips and the user to seat ratio now you'd also put in assumptions here that you're making so the assumption uh, when you're starting this was that this uh, the you would by trying get approvals from the government for building this project right so that's all of that also is something that you need to keep in mind when you're writing a prd now this is just a very high level example of prd a prd is much more detailed than this and i'm going to uh, leave the problem for you to kind of take forward from this point on uh, i'm going to add a link to this prd in the chat box or the description box and you can definitely kind of play around with this and try to build something on your own so i hope this helps um, my goal with this video was to help you understand what a prd is and how you can get started expect more videos um, with respect to product management in the future if you like drop a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video thanks so much and have a great day